Hi sixth graders, this is Mrs. Gall. Today I'm going to talk through box plots, also known as box and whisker plots. Grab your notebook, open up to a fresh page, and press play when you're ready to continue. A few things to know about box plots is they show distribution of data on a number line. That means how spread out our data is. And it divides our data into four equal parts, which are known as quartiles. Before we get going on how to make a box plot, we do need to identify a few new landmarks that are needed when making box plots. So let's go ahead and practice this together. There's a few traditional landmarks that you'll need to know from our previous unit, like the median. A reminder to find the median, you put your data in order from least to greatest and then cross off low high until you get to the center. If you come down to two numbers in the middle, then you want to find the center of those two numbers, which in this case would be 29. You can always add those two numbers together and divide by two to find the center if it's harder for you to spot. Lower quartile is a new landmark. That's the median of the lower half of the data. We sometimes refer to, refer to it as the LQ. So to find the lower quartile, I'm going to look where I drew my line for the median right here. And I'm going to look at everything below that line and find the median of just these points below the median. So if I go to find the median of these four points, I would cross off low, high, and then I'm already down to two numbers in the middle. To find the center of 25 and 28, remember you could add them together and divide by 2, and that would give us 26 and a half. That is what we call the lower quartile, the median of the lower half of the data. Since we have a lower quartile, we're also going to have an upper quartile. Upper quartile is the opposite. It's the median of the upper half of the data. So let's go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to look at all values above the median, and I'm going to find the, me the median of those numbers. So I cross off low, high, and I come down to 231s, so the upper quartile must be 31. The last new landmark is the interquartile range. That's where you take the upper quartile and you subtract it from the lower quartile. So it's just like the range, but instead of max minus min, we take upper minus lower quartiles and subtract them. So if I wanted to find that for these quartiles, I'm going to take 31 minus 26.5. You can do this on a calculator. When I take that and subtract, I get 4.5. So that is my inner quartile range. You won't need the inner quartile range to make a box plot, but it is a landmark we're going to be asking you about. Press pause and make sure you have all of this written down in your notebook. Press play when you're ready to continue. Let's try an example on your own. Will you please find the median, the lower quartile, and the upper quartile? Once you've found those, then find the inner quartile range. If you want to watch as I do this one as well, please do. This one will be a little bit different. So to start with the median, I'm going to cross off low high of all of the data until I'm down to one number in the center. In this case, it does work out to one number, 15. To find the lower quartile, we're going to look at all of the numbers below the median. So notice I'm not going to include the median. I put a box around it if it comes down to one number, and I look at everything below the median for the lower quartile. I cross off low high, and I come down to 13. Now let's look at the upper quartile, all of the data above the median. When I find the median of those three numbers, it's 23. The inner quartile range is going to be my 23 upper quartile minus 13, my lower quartile, and I end up with 10 as the inner quartile range. Just to clarify, when we come down to one number in the center as the median, 
we put a box around it and it's off limits. We look at everything below it for the lower quartile and above it for the upper quartile. But on the last slide, when we came down to two numbers in the center and we drew that line where the median fell, we look on either side of the line. So we do include that number on the left of the line and we do include that number on the right of the line. So that's something that's a little bit different between those two examples that you'll want to know. Let's move on and go ahead and practice looking at a box plot and look at the things that we can identify here. So this is an example of a box plot. Maybe now you can see why it's sometimes referred to as a box and whisker because we see a box and we see those extension pieces that we call whiskers. You'll see just as you would on the other number lines we've talked about, a title. This is the American League wins from 2016. You see a label for our number line, number of wins. And then you see our number line, which is counting in intervals of by fives. There's also a lot of great landmarks you can spot just by looking at your box plot. Your box plot will always be made up of the same five landmarks. Your minimum is always going to be the whisker to the left, which in this case is 59. Your maximum is always going to be your whisker to the right, 95. Your box is always going to be made up of the lower quartile, which will be the start of your box, the median, which will be the line inside of the box, and your upper quartile, the top part of the box. That's why we practiced finding lower quartile and upper quartile, because in order to make your own box plot, you're going to have to be able to know how to find those. Each quartile, or part of your box plot, represents 25% of your data. From 59 to 74, we have 25% of the data. The first half of my box, 74 to 84, holds 25% of the data. 84 to 89 holds 25% of my data, and 89 to 95 holds 25% of my data. So each whisker is worth 25% of the data, and each part of the box is worth 25% of the data. Sometimes the pieces will look longer, if there's a bigger jump in between the data there, it's kind of more spread out. But we have the same number of data points in each section. It's just sometimes closer together because there's more data closer together in certain parts of your data set. For example, this is the data that was used to make this box plot. If I draw a line for where a fourth of the data would be, you can kind of start to see how certain fourths of the data are a little bit more spread out than others. For example, look at our first line, 59 to about 74. That's a pretty big range. So when I look at my graph, I see a little bit of a longer whisker. It's still about three and a half points or four points. When I look at my next section, it's a little bit widespread, but not as much as the first, but it still is the same number of points. 84 to 89 definitely doesn't have as much of a, a widespread range of numbers, but it has quite a few numbers. It still has that 25%, so it's a little bit closer together. So the size of the box has nothing to do with how many numbers. It's always 25% of the numbers. The size of the box or size of the whisker just is depending on how spread out those numbers are. This is very important to make sure you're understanding each section is worth 25%, so please label that somehow in your notebook so that makes sense to you. Let's work on creating a box plot now, and we're going to look, look at the National League wins. Go ahead and pause to write this uh, data down. You're going to create a number line using any interval that extends from at least the minimum to the maximum, and then we're going to find the minimum maximum, and median of the data. I think I already have a number line down here. No, nope, I sure don't, so let me make that. I might run out of room. We'll see how we do. Okay, here's my number line. What would it make sense to count by if we're starting at 68 and going up to 103? Probably fives. I'm going to restart. Okay. 
You'll notice I don't have every individual tick mark on these. You don't need them because a lot of times you'll actually label your landmarks as you're creating your box plot. So you don't need every single tick mark like we did for the dot plot. So I'm going to go all the way up to 105. So my number line might be a little bit um, too long and that's okay. Okay, now we're going to find those three landmarks that it stated we need first. The minimum, the maximum, and the median. And we're going to put a dot above the number line for each of those. So my minimum, 68. I'm going to find about where 68 would be. I'm going to go up a little bit and put a dot there. My maximum, 103. I'm going to find about where 100 with 3 would fall. Go up and put a dot. I'm also going to label those. It's most helpful when those are labeled for you so you can tell exactly what they are. So above those dots, I'm just going to put what those values were. Now let's find the median. It came down to 78. So we're going to find 78, go up, put a dot, Label it 78. Once we found the min, the max, and the median, now we're going to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile and mark each of those with a dot. A reminder that when we have one number in the center, we're going to look at everything below it for the lower quartile and everything above it for the upper quartile. I'm going to do a different color here so you can see me crossing off low high. Okay, I came down for the lower quartile to one number, 69, so I'm going to find that and place a 69, which will be right by my 68. You don't have to do these in different colors, I just am because I wanted to show you the lower and upper quartiles. Now let's find the upper quartile, everything above 78, I'm going to find the median of, and I come down to one number, 87. So I put a dot. 87. Again, those are the five landmarks you're always going to use to make a box plot. Minimum, maximum, median, lower quartile, upper quartile. I've got one more step and it is going to kind of overlap here with my graph so I'll move it once I release it and we talk through it. Now we're going to make a box. The box is going to go from the lower quartile to the upper quartile and then we're going to draw a line through where the median was. So I'm going to draw a box from the upper to the lower quartile, my blue. So your three center points are going to make a box with a line through it where your median was. The median won't always be in the exact center. Sometimes it'll be slightly off. So you draw a line wherever that median is. So there's your box. Then we need our whiskers. So the very last part is we extend from our box to our maximum and our minimum for our whiskers. I'll take my graph off in a second so you can see those steps if you would like, but that's what it's going to look like, you guys. We have our box, we have our whiskers, and just a reminder, each size is not going to be the same because although it's the same number of data points in each, each section, around 25% of the data, sometimes the data is really close together like it is here, so it creates a much smaller sized piece than when the data is a little bit more spread out like it is here. Okay, I'm gonna move my drawing so you can see those steps. If you wanna pause and write any of those down, please do so now. All right, you guys, the last thing we're gonna talk through is just answering some questions by looking at a box plot. Just a friendly reminder, your minimum and your maximum are always your whiskers. Your box is made up of your lower quartile, median, and upper quartile. So that should be able to help you as we answer these questions. What is the median number of tickets sold for 2016? Where do we find the median? The line inside the box. 43 would be our median for this box plot. Ooh, what is the mean for this set of data? You can't find the mean with this box plot. You don't know the data 
all you know is five of the landmarks and mean is not one of them. So you cannot find the mean by looking at this box plot. Can you find the mode? No, you can't see the data. You don't know if there's any repetition in that data set. So you can't find the mode either. What is the lower quartile? Remember that the lower quartile is the start of your box, so LQ is 39. What about your upper quartile? The highest part of your box, which is 48. Interquartile range, do you remember what we subtract there? Upper quartile minus lower quartile. 48 minus 39 would give you 9 for the interquartile range. What about the maximum? Maximum is your highest whisker, 58. Minimum is your smallest whisker, 27. And it might ask us about range. How do we find the range? Maximum minus minimum. What would that be for this set of data? 31. The last thing is talking about percentage. So sometimes we'll ask you questions about what percent is above or below a certain point on your graph. So remember that each section is worth what? 25%. So what percent of the data is above 48? Here's 48. Above 48 I have one section, so that's 25% of the data. What percent of the section, I'm sorry, what percent of the data is above 43? 43 is my median. I have one, two sections above, so that's 50% of my data. What about below 48? How many sections are below 48? Well, here's 48. I have one, two, three. That's 75% since each section is worth 25. Those are types of questions that you can expect to see related to percentages. That's all we're going to cover for today. Talk with your teacher if you have any more questions about box plots.